makes a extremely nice body. Uh, you can tie in all different sizes. Very good for Caris larvae, Caris pupa. Now you can get this in different colours and different sizes depending on basically the species that you're tying in size. So obviously, I mean there's a green. That's a natural and small. It's a medium and a large and natural. And this one here is a olive brown. You can see the nice Nice colours, good stuff. And this comes from a company in Romania. It's called www.troutline.ro. So now, this is a size 12. It's just the grub, the grub style hook. I've put, this is a 2.5mm tungsten bead and copper. Now I'm just going to thicken the body up slightly. I'm going to add some sticky back lead foil. Just going to put a layer down up towards about the eye itself. And then work my way back down, forming like a taper. To about that point there. And then remove and break away the excess. You can use the back of your nail just to smooth it off a bit. Now, I'm going to use two or three threads here, but the first, the main thread at the start, is a UTC thread in yellow. This will help brighten up the underbody. Now, what I'm going to do here is just quickly run down and come back up just tying in the lead best you can and then remove the waste piece now for the rib and to help me form the gills on the body I'm going to use a gossamer silk and this is a gold or a yellow quite a strong yellow now it's on the bobbin hole as you can see you'll see how what I do with it is a, when I tie the fly but it's just to help as I say give me the rib and represent the gills. Now I'm just going to tie it in, go all the way down to that point there and just leave it to the side. Now I've got, this is a medium natural cat gut, now I've had it soaking in some water. What that does is that softens it up. Now I'm just going to take the thread up to see this point here and then tie it in. Basically you can tie it on the side or on the top, it's up to yourself. And work your way around this point here. And then work your way back up. Now you're going to wind this up. Now because it's soft at that point I can actually get it to start a wee bit better. Now it's quite thick so that's what you want though. Just bringing it up. You want it not exactly touching, slight space so that you can get something in between. Just work your way up, forming the body. To get to this point here, and then you come across your thread, and then tie it in. Now it is really strong, so just take your time when you're doing that. Trim away. I'm just going to put a wee bit of wax on my thread at this point and basically tidy up that area. Now what I'm going to do is then put finish, take this thread away. Just take the thread out. Trim it. Now you're left with the, the bobbin and the gossamer silk. Now what I've got here is you can use rabbit or in this case, this is some white mink, very fine. You don't want the guard here, you just want the under fur. To apply it to the thread, I mean, first thing is you wax the thread, spin the bobbin anti-clockwise, which will open out the thread turns. And then, lightly, just dub, or just sit the, the dubbing, the, the mink onto the thread. Don't want too much. Don't worry if some of this falls off. So you only need a wee drop. Now you need a length round about maybe say no more than two inches. Now because I've spun, I've spun the, the thread uh, anti-clockwise I say it opens out the thread turns. Now clockwise I'll obviously put them back in. Now with, with the wax being on the thread it'll give it grip. You see it's starting to spin. Tighten back up. There we go. 
And then what we do is we bring the thread between the turns of the cat gut all the way up. Just then to come up a wee bit, so I'm just going to tighten up. There we go. This will give the impressions of the gills. You can see quite dense, quite nice. No over, don't overdo it, it's very easy to put too much on. Now I'm going to change to a darker thread, and this is just a uni thread in dark brown in 8 -oh. So I'm just going to bring the thread in now. And again, just tie over the top of the gossamer thread and trim away the waste piece of the brown. And then all we have to do is just carry down, slightly come over that last turn. And you see it makes for a really nice body. Once that's wet, it's, it's actually be hard to tell the difference between the natural and this. Now, the dubbing, I'm just going to use a, a dark brown dubbing. I'm only going to put a wee drop on at this point. Just a wee drop. Tie in at this point here. And then, just drawing it back with my fingers. I'm going to get a brown partridge hackle, small brown partridge hackle. Now you can wind it on, if you can get them small enough you can wind them on. Or you can just cut a V in it. And then just basically cut that in and put a right and a left side on it. Come in, take that out. Just want an even split either side. Just come around with a couple of loose turns. Just to get it to sit the way you want. You want the fibres towards the back. See how it's sitting like that. It looks okay. And you can tighten up again, trim away the excess. By cutting the V you get the exact size you want all the time. Now I've just put a wee bit of wax on my thread here just to make sure everything's nice and tight. Now this is an optional thing, I'm just going to put some horns on the, the carrots. I like, it's just a wee, it's a wee touch I like on the flies, I like to see that. Now this is just hen pheasant. It's just the centre tail until you take two fibres, make sure they're lined up, tail them off. Now, length, not too long, probably twice the length of the, if you do the body length, twice the length of that. Just hold them on the sides, come around again with two or three turns just to secure. It's fine. Pull it back and break it off. Looks okay. You can use your nail to curl them in a wee bit, just to give them a wee bit more shape. And then we're back to our dubbing again. Just put that in front. Just build it up. A wee bit more, just want a wee touch more. The shape that you like, you know, that you like to see in your flies anyway. Quite simple to, f to f tie off, it's just all I do is super glue onto the thread, wind two or three times, and then come in and finish with the rest. And there we are. And then just allow it to dry. Get some Velcro. And then hold the, just be careful at this point, just hold the, the legs or the partridge and the, the horns. Now what I like to do is just brush some of the dubbing towards the, the bead. So it brings the dubbing towards the front and then you just with your fingers, roll it back. And there you are. And that's your cat gut caddis. Caddis pupa. As I say, I'm going to tie in different sizes. I mean, I've, and different beads. This is the
the smaller one, this is a size 16. And I've used a small copper bead on this one. And uh, on this one here, I've used the, the sort of basic tungsten or nickel coloured. Again, this one here's a size 14. So different sizes, I'm certainly going to try it out and basically see how they work. And uh, But they do have a great reputation. Now, just for security, what you can do is just put a tiny bit of varnish. Seal everything up round the bead. All the way around. And just allow it to dry.